To quickly review the solar flare attacks and what happened, these all started with the initial backdoor um, supply chain compromise. Uh, that was a piece of malware known as Sunburst. Um, this piece of malware would be act had when deployed and installed would wait about two weeks and then start beaking it out over DNS, waiting to be activated by the attackers. Um, but when it was beaking it out, the domain that it was beaking out to um, would actually contain information about the location it was coming from. So attackers could audit whether they wanted to activate the C2 and use that system to perform a, a larger scale attack. Um, if they did, uh, they would activate that C2. The C2 would do some local reconnaissance and be to download a more powerful, full-fledged C2, something like Cobalt Strike. It's been referred to sometimes as Teardropper, which was the uh, tool that was downloaded and stolen from FireEye. Once they had full control using this uh, advanced C2, they would do standard kind of attack techniques on the network to gain domain admin. So this meant network reconnaissance using tools like Bloodhound to move through the environment and find basically where they could uh, access a, a domain admin account. We know that they leverage things like scheduled tasks um, and other kind of native uh, Microsoft techniques to, to do remote code execution across other systems to move. Once they moved through the network and got access to a domain admin credential, they used it to steal the SAML signing certificate. Um, with that stolen SAML signing certificate, they could create uh, logins to any account they wanted in the cloud. Uh, and using those uh, accounts, they can move to try to exfil data or collect emails. And so they would sign their cells a certificate. This would access Azure AD and O365. Once they were in Azure AD, O365, they look to add persistence, um, making changes to Azure AD backend, as well as making changes to credentials uh, and creating new credentials to maintain access in O365 and Azure AD. And then the last piece with the attack that we understand is that email collection happens. So there's a variety of different XFIL techniques that could have been leveraged there um, that we understand uh, may have been in play. Here we are in the Vectra console. FireEye just reported that SolarWinds was part of supply chain compromise. Um, not much is known yet, uh, and I want to understand if the, the Vectra system was able to alert any of the behaviors that have been described and see if I can piece together um, what's happened. It looks like my Orion system is here in the high quadrant. Let's investigate. Looking here and sorting things by first scene, it looks like there is a hidden HPS tunnel that's running from the system. Let's take a look at that detection first. So if you look here, there's two tunnels that are running. This is one going to avssmcloud.com. Now, fast forward to the future, we know that this was the initial C2 domain that was used to communicate uh, about what basically was infected in the system um, with a response back from uh, the DNS beacon that was happening and use then to do local reconnaissance and then to download a full-fledged C2, which I would assume this would be part of the full-fledged C2 that was actually running on that system. Jumping back into the Orion system here, we see some reconnaissance that's happening, suspicious LDAP query and RPC recon. These two behaviors are really indicative of a tool like Bloodhound getting run, something that's performing AD reconnaissance, trying to understand the environment and then potentially trying to obtain domain, uh, domain credentials. Now, if someone were to obtain those domain credentials, they would have to move laterally into the system to get access to them. And that looks like what was happening here. So we have some suspicious execution here that are moving towards Gwen, a host here, Gwen. Now, I know that Gwen machine to actually be the domain admins machine. Let's take a look and see what techniques were actually used here. We have an S service control manager. We know that lateral movement techniques like remote code execution, IT scheduled tasks were part of the attack in retrospect, um, definitely aligned with kind of the behaviors that were described. It looks like then we're seeing here a uh, privilege access anomaly, which involved that Gwen account. So that domain admin account that was found here gets used again from this machine to move to a new service here, a team server here and moves there. Now let's take a look and just see what that account does afterwards. 
and it looks like there is a lot of activity here. So again, sorting things by first seen here, we can see that basically things start off with that privilege anomaly unusual trio, so that lateral movement inside the network. This was probably the piece that gained that uh, SAML signing certificate, and that was used then to sign in basically a bypass MFA. So you have a suspicious sign on here, detection that came in from a rare P with a concurrent session is kind of the reasons that it was triggered on. And then from there, we can see that more progression happened in Azure AD and O365. We've got a setting of federated uh, settings on a domain. So this is adding a new domain basically to give persistence for the attacker. We then have redundant access, cre access creation here where a service principal credential uh, was getting added into email archiving applications. This is likely giving kind of persistence and data access within O365. Then it looks like you can see here pieces of that data exfiltration, the three different things that kind of came into place here. So you have exchange transport rules getting leverage here that are being used to move data outside the environment. You have e-discovery getting leverage here to search and identify data that can be collected and exfilled here um, using, again, native O365 technologies. And then last, you have a suspicious power automate flow creation here that's getting used. It looks like it was getting used in conjunction with that e-discovery to exfil this data outside the environment. So it's clear that with the detect system, you're able to identify the entire progression of an advanced attack like these solar winds attacks, starting from the network and then moving all the way back to the cloud. The whole step of the way is prioritized and the severity of each of these accounts and services that are being leveraged or being effectively tracked.